In this segment, we're going to take a look at how you can customize your work environment. And that's found here under the Setup drop down menu. The option's called Work Environment. And there's several things that you can control in the work environment. I guess the first thing is going to be your grid settings. And currently, I have my grid turned off. I can choose this to turn the grid back on. And this is where I can decide the grid spacing. And it can be anywhere from 2 millimeters to 200 millimeters. So, for example, if I set my grid spacing at uh, 10 millimeters and say OK, here you can see my grid is there's 10 millimeters from one grid line to the next grid line. But if I go under my setup work environment and then change that grid spacing to be, let's say, smaller, like 2 millimeters, say OK. Now you can see that I have a much smaller grid in the background. And that's how you can set it. Of course, we have the button to display this grid on and off, but it was under the setup work environment that you could control the spacing for your grid. Now the next option you have is for your background. And your choices are, first of all, colors or fabrics. And you get to control the inside of the hoop and the outside of the hoop. So for example, currently the inside of the hoop is set for this yellow color. But if I'd rather have a purple inside of my hoop, I can just simply choose it there and say OK. And you'll see that now my inside of my hoop has changed to purple. And maybe I'll turn the grid off so that it's not um, displayed at the moment. And go back to the setup menu and the work environment. And this time we'll take a look at the outside of the hoop. And it's currently set at dark gray. But if I'd rather have that be white or any other color, I could say OK. And so I can customize the colors of my work environment. Now if I turn my hoop off, everything's white. But the inside of the hoop is still purple. So under the Setup Work Environment, if you want to, you can choose Fabrics. So the inside of my hoop could be made into, um, so let's browse for a fabric. So instead of going with colors, we go with fabrics. And now we browse for a fabric. And let's just try something like blue corduroy. And we'll try that. So it gave me a fabric in the background. In this case, it's inside and outside of my hoop. Um, but those are your options. So let's go back to the work environment. There's more to this option. So OK, background colors versus fabrics, fine. Now the next option is display hoop. Well, that's fine. We can, we can also turn the hoop on and off with the tool on the toolbar. But we have the ability here to create our own hoops. And this is really important, especially for people who don't use a Janome embroidery machine. When you choose Create Hoop, you're given the option to create a new hoop. So um, you can create a rectangular hoop, or you can create an oval hoop. So why don't we start with a rectangle hoop? And I'll just say, well, what if you had a really large hoop? Maybe it's 400 height, and maybe it's 400 in width. You have a nice big commercial embroidery machine. So you've got a nice large hoop. And you create it, and you say Save. And you say, well, I'll call this my um, 400 square. And I'll hit Save. I'll say OK. So now if I zoom out, and I change my machine type to be Other, and then I look at the hoops available for the other type of machine, I now have a 400 square hoop that I could use on the machine. So that's your ability to create your own hoops. And if I look under that Setup Work Environment drop down area menu, um, if we said Create Hoop, the other option was Oval. And so with the Oval Hoop, then you get to show, I guess, the total height of the hoop, and then the sort of rectangle height of the hoop and the width of the hoop. And so those are the three things that you get to choose. And then when you say Save, we'll call this the 350 Oval. You can call your hoops any name you like. Say OK. And so now again, under the Other Machine mode, I have a 350 Oval. So that tells you a little bit more about the Setup of Work Environment. There's one more thing I want to look at under the Setup Work Environment. Um, we also have some tabs here. So under the Display tab, those were our options. But we also have an Auto Save tab. And basically what happens here is it's either turned on or turned off. I recommend leaving this turned on. And this is set to automatically save my design every 10 minutes. 
That means that um, Digitizer will save my design as I go along. So when you start a design and you give it a name, um, the software will automatically save it every 10 minutes. And if you don't give it a name and it's just still just called Design 1 or whatever the default is, it'll save that. It doesn't matter. That way, if you ever have a problem and your system crashes or you've got a power failure, um, when you start the design up again, the software is able to recover your embroidery because it's got an auto-saved version. Now, we also have a tab for Edit, and this tab relates to creating duplicates of objects. And the option is either to have the duplicate created in exactly the same position as the original object, or if you want, you can have it shift the new object, and in that case, the new object comes in whatever setting you want. Right now it's set for three millimeters X and three millimeters Y. So that means basically if you hit copy and then you hit paste and the new object will be placed um, just offset from the original, it helps you to realize that you've made a duplicate, I guess is really why that's there. But you can control that here in the work environment and I'll probably talk about this again in the video when we talk about making duplicates. Um, the last tab in here is the scrolling tab and this relates to your mouse and if your mouse has a scroll wheel then what does the auto scroll wheel do and so this is your ability to choose to enable the auto scroll and then after you use auto scroll where does the mouse go so move it to the midway point um, you can set the response time how quickly it happens and the actual default wheel behavior so the default action is to zoom in two times so if you scroll with your mouse you'll get two times closer each time you move it or you can use the alt key down and you'll get vertical scrolling or you can get your hold your control key down and you can get vertical scrolling and while you're holding the shift key down you can have a different zoom ratio for scrolling so these are the types of settings that you get to control um, and this is how you set the behavior of your wheel mouse. So that's the work environment options found under the setup drop down menu.